Greetings. My name is Colin Knapp, and I'm one of the pastors of this beloved community, Pilgrim Congregational Church. You have decided to join us for worship this day, the fifth Sunday after Epiphany, and I'm glad that you are here. If you're new this morning, Pilgrim is a wonderful little community. We are a church that gathers together virtually in the past year. Uh, we gather every week to worship God and to ask questions and to celebrate life and to always be creative about how we are putting our faith into action. And so I'm glad that you are here. Come, let us worship. My name is Christine Vels Vesley. Welcome to Pilgrim Online Worship Service this fifth Sunday after Epiphany, February 7th, 2021. I'm honored to be your liturgist this morning. Please join me for the call to worship. In the morning when the sun rises, we will praise you, O Lord. You have stood by us through every long night and given us safe passage across rivers of struggle. The darkness is past. The light has come. Let us raise a song and prayer to you, O Lord. Come, let us worship our God. 
And now please join me in an attitude of prayer. Holy Creator, everything we need is found in you. For those of us who come here feeling broken, bring restoration. For those of us who come here feeling weak, bring strength. For those of us who come here weeping, bring hope. For those of us who come here with doubts, faith. For those of us who have come here feeling shame, freedom. For those of us who come here feeling burdened, bring rest. For those of us who come here feeling anxious, bring peace. We ask all these things through Jesus Christ, our brother and teacher. Amen. Amen. And now please join me in the opening hymn, which is printed in your bulletin. I'm going to eat at the welcome table. Let us confess our sins before God and one another. Please join me. Holy and all-powerful God, who commands all spirits, comforts those in distress, and casts out destructive forces, we confess that we are unable to do your will. We protect what is familiar and reject what is unknown. We admire those with courage, but excuse ourselves when we falter from the truth. We forget that you are always with us and that with you all things are possible. Forgive us, lead us, and make us new. Remove our desire to heed false prophets and show us your way. Amen. And now, friends, hear the good news. The God who made you and knows your every thought hears you now and forgives all your sins. You have been redeemed through Jesus Christ, God's Son, our Savior, who is the Alpha and Omega, all in all. As I enjoy the peace of the Pilgrim Sanctuary, may each of you enjoy the same peace of Christ. As peaceful as the falling snow, I send you the peace of Christ. May the peace and the joy of God be with you. And remember, you can make a difference in this world. I was glad when they said unto me, let us go to the house of the Lord. Peace be with you, friends. Hi, this is Lois, wishing each and every one of you a wonderful week, uh, a wonderful month. And we're very happy to be observing Black History Month, but 
every day should be Black History Day. Our first scripture reading comes from Isaiah, chapter 40. I'll be reading Robert Outler's translation. Do you not know? Have you not heard? Was it not told to you from the first? Have you not grasped how the earth was founded? He is enthroned on the rim of the earth, and its dwellers are like grasshoppers. He spreads out the heavens like gauze and stretches them like a tent to dwell in. He turns princes into nothing, earth's rulers he makes as naught. Hardly planted, hardly sown, hardly their stem rooted in earth. When he blows on them, they wither, and the storm bears them off like chaff. And to whom would you liken me that I may be compared, says the Holy One? Lift up your eyes and see who created these. He who musters their host by number and all of them calls by name. Through abundant strength and mighty power, no one lacks in the ranks. Why should you say, O Jacob, and speak, O Israel, my way is hidden from the Lord. My cause is ignored by God. Do you not know? Have you not heard? An eternal God is the Lord creator of the ends of the earth. He does not tire, is not weary. His discernment cannot be fathomed. He gives vigor to the weary and great power to those sapped of strength. Lads may grow weary and tire and young men may badly stumble. But who wait for the Lord shall renew vigor shall grow new pinions like the eagles, shall run and shall not tire, walk on and not be weary. This is a word of the Lord for us, the people of God. Thanks be to God. Good morning, Pilgrim. Today we're going to talk about power. Now we can build up power in our bodies physically by what? doing exercises or running or maybe weightlifting. But let's talk about power that's natural power, like solar power, wind power. We have power in our homes through electricity, don't we? We plug things in and they work. But today we're going to talk about the power in scripture. And today we're looking at a very powerful scripture from Psalm 147. It is chock full of powerful sentences, but here's the couple that I picked out. Great is our Lord. His power is mighty. There is no limit to his understanding. The Lord gives strength to those who are not proud. The Lord takes delight in those who who have respect for him. Those are powerful, aren't they? Well, I want to talk about the difference between people power and God power. It's good to have people uh, surrounding us who give us strength and build us up by their knowledge or their caringness or their respect. But it's important to have God also in our life giving us the power and realize that we need both. So we're going to have a little demonstration here. Here I have person power. That's only surrounding yourself with people who have power and not relying on God. So if these are us, I put those in and look at that. They don't float, do they? They sink right to the bottom because they don't have quite enough strength or power that you need when you link up with God and God's power. Now let's see what would happen when we use God power. 
Just wait a minute and you'll see how it'll rise to the top. See, because they're starting to rise, because with God power, he keeps us afloat. So am I saying we don't want to have people around us who are powerful and supporting us? Of course not. But what I want to say is that we look first to God for our power and our strength. And then next, surround ourselves with those who support us. Let us pray. Dear God, in the Bible, there are so many powerful scriptures. Today, we hear how God is our might and our power and stands with us forever and ever. Help us to realize that we need you, God, as our power in our life. Amen. Today's second scripture reading is from Psalm 147. Praise the Lord. How good it is to sing praises to our God, for he is gracious, and a song of praise is fitting. The Lord builds up Jerusalem. He gathers the outcasts of Israel. He heals the brokenhearted and binds up their wounds. He determines the number of the stars. He gives them to all of them their names. Great is our Lord and abundant in power. His understanding is beyond measure. The Lord lifts up the downtrodden. He casts the wicked to the ground. Sing to the Lord with thanksgiving. Make melody to our God on the lyre. He covers the heavens with clouds, prepares rain for the earth, makes grass grow on the hills. He gives to the animals their food and to the young ravens when they cry. His delight is not in the strength of the horse, nor his pleasure in the speed of the runner. But the Lord takes pleasure in those who fear him, in those who hope in his steadfast love. This is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks, Thanks be, be to God. God. We often forget about God. We have many reasons for doing so. Some seemingly good, some not so good, some understandable, some contemptible. Whatever the rationale, it seems to be a persistent problem for us humans. Which is funny in a certain way when you think about it because God is really the one that makes so much of our lives happen. So much is out of our hands, beyond our control. You've heard me say it before, but I'll say it again. The pandemic has been a really good teacher in this regard. I hope you're learning the lesson. We are not the main character in our story. God is really the one in charge. And while we may bristle at such a notion, there are without a doubt moments in our lives when we feel that this is true, that we are reminded that this is true. And the weight of that truth sinks down into the very depths of our souls. We have these moments of vulnerability when we are sick, when we are weak, when we fall down and are not exactly sure how to get back up, when things fall apart, when a clear choice is not obvious about what to do next. So much of our faith journey seems to be about learning how not to forget God, how to cultivate this awareness to the presence of God in our lives, how to improve our vision for it, to dwell in it amidst the turmoil, through the unknown, when all hell seems to be breaking loose. Or maybe just even remembering God on a normal nine to five. That seems easy enough to do, but may in fact prove to be the hardest thing to remember God when all is well. I've been blessed enough to have a lot of really wonderful mentors along my journey. 
I remember my very first set of mentors, a married couple named Bob and Mama Jo. They were the camp directors where I volunteered for many summers. And it was this same camp where I first heard and discovered God. Well, one day, Mama Jo sat all the staff down. She told us that she had been diagnosed with breast cancer. Now, I didn't know a lot about serious diseases back then, but I did know that the C word, cancer, was a word that made everyone stop what they were doing, pay attention. Cancer was no joke. And by the look on Bob's face, I could tell that this was not a drill. His forehead was browed. He was silent, but clearly worried. He looked almost like stone, as if all the energy and life had been drained out of his body and he just stood there. Mama Jo, however, the person who actually had cancer, she looked perky, bright, joyful. And I remember she just said to everyone with all the seriousness in the world, God's grace will be enough. Now, I didn't know what that meant at the time, as I couldn't really give you a working definition of grace, let alone the type of grace that comes from God. But I did know that Mama Jo seemed to be in a very different place than the rest of us. Maybe she was just more aware of God's presence in her life. Maybe she thought she really would live. Or maybe she was just okay with the thought of her own death. I didn't know. But I did know that she believed God would be with her no matter what. And that expression of her faith has stuck with me all these years, that calm, level joy, that acknowledgement of God in the face of an existential threat. How did, how did she manage to do that? How did she do that? Through it all, she didn't lose sight of God. And that is really what this piece of ancient, poignant poetry from Isaiah is all about. Don't forget, notice the sentences that repeat and provide structure for the passage, verses 21 and 28. Have you not known? Have you not heard? These questions are directed to folks who should know. These are the folks who have learned scripture. They've been to the temple. They've celebrated a Passover feast. These are the people of God. The problem isn't that they don't know. The problem is that they seem to have forgotten. This is a reoccurring problem for the people of God throughout Scripture. The Bible is full of stories of people who forget or run away or let go of God. In the creation story, after Adam and Eve eat the forbidden fruit and screw it all up for the rest of us, they don't run to God. No, they, they hide from God in the trees of the garden as if they won't be found. In 1 Kings, when Queen Jezebel is looking for his life, the prophet Elijah runs to a cave and apparently is just going to wait to die. And who could forget when the disciple Peter is confronted with the reality of his relationship with Jesus, he does not speak the truth with boldness. No, he denies, denies, denies. I hope you're seeing a pattern here. Isaiah is reminding those who hear these words of God's creative power. 
God dwells beyond the pole of our world and its inhabitants are like mere insects, grasshoppers, the text says. God brings rulers and nations of the earth to nothing. If you look back at the verses before our reading today, you will see even more of these metaphorical references to God's power. Even the nations are like a drop from the bucket and are counted as dust on the scales. This is a God who is incomparable with everything else that we might know. A God whose power is not even describable, who does not grow weary. A God who is also imminent who does not fail to understand or draw near to those who seek God or are in distress. Now, in contrast to God's power, the people have found themselves in an, a place of utter powerlessness. God's word of transcendent power and yet also utter imminence is so crucial here because the people of God are in exile in Babylon and they are now tempted to trust in another power, the power of another God, the power of the nation state, the power of violence. Babylon was the empire of their day, and no doubt it was terrifying, beyond belief, to watch their holy city turn to ashes and dust as they were exiled, marched off into an unknown place. And so they concluded, verse 27 says, that my way is hidden from the Lord. My right hand is disregarded by my God. But the real threat isn't Babylon, because in the end, they will wither. They are like stubble. The real threat is that the people of God in exile will forget. They will forget the God who breathed life into all that is and still continues to do so this very day. They will forget the God who provides hope and strength and consign themselves to a future of fruitless despair. They will forget the God who not only is mighty in power, but also hears their cries for help even the ones they whisper underneath their breath. Don't forget, just like the Israelites, we may be in a certain sense powerless, but we trust and wait for a God who holds real power. Don't forget, that is the hidden source of our renewed strength. Don't forget. By remembering our God and our sacred story, we remember that all things will be made new. And we learn to be a people of hope. In America, we like to forget. We forget the people we enslaved, the cultures we annihilated, the way in which we secured our wealth and power. That's one of the reasons we have a month dedicated to black history in this country, because otherwise we wouldn't tell it. And because we forgot we get to tell this other story that we like better. The story of American greatness. You see it a lot in truck commercials. You probably see it tonight if you watch the Super Bowl. That we're the best nation, a Christian nation. That this is the land of freedom and we can do anything if we just work hard enough. And I could go on and on, but you already know this story. It's a myth, and not a particularly true one at that. We need to stop telling this distorted story. We need to start 
remembering. We need to remember our entire history, not just the one that makes folks who look and live like me comfortable. Here's an innocent photo I came across in the New York Times several months ago. What do you see? I see a restaurant, probably one that sells greasy, delicious food, and now I'm starting to get hungry for onion rings. Look again. You'll notice the bright neon sign that says, Drive-In. And then you'll see that small window off to the right. You probably assume, like me, that this is the drive through window. Except it turns out that Ed's doesn't have a drive through and never has. That small window was the segregated window used during the Jim Crow era for black customers. Remember segregation? Remember Jim Crow? Remember the necessity of the Voting Rights Act? When asked why the window is still there, the owner said, if we don't remember where we've been, we might get lost again. Remember, we are in a pandemic, a place of powerlessness. We may be tempted to forget, to trust and believe in a shadow of the truth, an idol of our own creation, a story not our own, in a God who cannot save or even hear. Today, we remember who God is, who knows the fullness of the past we don't want to remember, who is with us right now, even in our plight, and who by trusting in, revives our hopes, sprouts our courage for the days ahead. Don't forget. In the name of the triune God, amen.
Now's the time in our service where we give back to God just a portion of what we've been given. You are invited to give to Pilgrim Congregational Church using any of these methods. Online at www.pilgrimoakpark.org. Select Giving from the menu or click Give to Pilgrim button. Via the Tithely app, which you can download from your phone's app store. Text the word GIVE to 833-721-1099. Of course, you can always mail a check into the church office. At this time, we ask you to give as generously as possible. Dear God, you are the great provider, the giver of all gifts. Your love, the only true currency. Thank you for putting money into our hands so that we freely give it back to you for use in your service here in our church, in our community, and in the wider world. We ask this in the name of Jesus. Amen. My sisters and brothers, I invite you now to gather your communion supplies, your bread and crackers, your wine or grape juice, Come and join me at this table. God calls us into the church to accept both the cost and the joy of discipleship, to be servants in the service of the whole human family, to proclaim the gospel to all the world, and to resist the powers of evil, to share in Christ's baptism, and to eat at this, his table, to join him in his passion and final victory. Let us pray together. We give you thanks, Holy One, Almighty and Eternal God, always and everywhere, through Jesus Christ, the only begotten One, before all time, and by whom you made all things. We bless you for your continual love and care for all creation. We praise you for forming us in your image and calling us to be your people. And even though we rebelled against your love, you did not abandon us to our sin, but sent prophets and teachers, mentors and friends to lead us into the way of salvation. And so we rejoice in the gift of your Son, Jesus Christ. Your Spirit anointed him to preach the good news to the poor, to proclaim release to the captives and recovery of sight to the blind, to set at liberty those who are oppressed, and to announce that the time had come when you would save your people. He healed the sick, fed the hungry, ate with sinners. By the baptism of his suffering, death, and resurrection, you gave birth to us, your church. You delivered us from slavery to sin and death and made with us a new covenant by water and the Spirit. And when the Lord Jesus ascended, he promised to be with us always in the power of his word and Holy Spirit. And so now, my sisters and brothers, with the confidence as children of God, let us pray the prayer Jesus taught us to pray, using whatever language we find most comfortable. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our sins, as we forgive those who sin against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever and ever. Amen. And so, on the night in which he gave himself up for us, Jesus took bread. 
He gave thanks to God. He broke the bread. And then he gave it to his disciples and he said, take and eat. This is my body, which is broken for you. Do this in remembrance of me. And now, when the supper was nearly over, he took a cup of wine. He gave thanks to God. And then he gave it to his disciples. And he said, drink from this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Drink from this as often as you gather in remembrance of me. Let us pray. Holy wind of creation, word of life, pour out your Holy Spirit on us gathered here in our bedrooms and living rooms and dining rooms and wherever we are. Pour out your Holy Spirit upon us and on these gifts of bread and wine. Make them be for us the body and blood of Christ that we may be for the world the body of Christ redeemed by his blood. Amen. And so, my sisters and brothers, I invite you to be what you see and to receive what you are. This is the body of Christ. You are the body of Christ. And so now, I invite you to take your bread to name it in faith as the bread of life broken for you, and to take your cup of wine or juice and to dip your bread in the cup. Taste and see that the Lord is good. Thanks be to God. Amen.
And now as we come to the end of our service, I have several announcements to share with you this week. Our Black History Month programming began this morning in adult enrichment with an engaging presentation on the history of the black church led by David Brodnack Sr. We continue next week with an overview of black liberation theology led by me and then end the month with a two part exploration of black hymnody led by Wilbert. Please check out the front page of our website for more information on all of the sessions this month. Pilgrim Community Nursery School invites you to join in their Dine Around fundraiser this Wednesday, February 10th. Enjoy a delicious takeout dinner from Trattoria 225 while supporting our preschool. Details are available on the website. Valentine's Day is next Sunday and it can be a lonely day for many people. Now imagine that you are young, homeless, may be kicked out of your home or estranged from family members. Please help the LGBTQIA group make the holiday a little warmer for the clients of the Night Ministry by sending a Valentine and a gift card. Information on how you can participate can be found on the front page of our website. Lent begins Wednesday, February 17th. Our deacons have purchased the UCC's 2021 Lenten devotional for you as you journey through Lent. If you would like a copy, you can stop by the church office Monday, Wednesday, or Friday from 9 to 4, or you can let Pastor Colin know if you would like one and he will deliver it to you. Our Ash Wednesday observance will look a bit different this year. We will not be having a worship service. However, Ashes to Go will be available Wednesday evening from 7 p.m. to 7.30 in the parking lot outside our church. Pastor Colin and I will be available for the imposition of Ashes. We look forward to your Passing of the Peace videos. Please keep sending those to Delena. And please continue to join Pastor Colin and I as you are able on Tuesday evenings at 8 p.m. for a brief service of evening prayer. The Zoom link is available on our website. Good morning. I am Stuart Barnes Jameson, and today I'm representing Pilgrim's Sacred Conversations on Race Committee, or SCORE, and the Be Bold Anti-Racism Group. I am grateful that as part of Pilgrim Church's observance today of the denomination's Racial Justice Sunday, these groups have been given the opportunity to speak about what they have been doing on behalf of Pilgrim Church. For over 30 years, Pilgrim has been seeking to become a more diverse and multicultural congregation. A diversity committee was formed at Pilgrim back in the 1990s which organized many educational programs and conversations to help us grow in our understanding of issues around race and racism, including our own attitudes and biases. Then in 2015, as the UCC was encouraging its congregations to begin conversations and reflections on race and racism, Pilgrim formed the Sacred Conversations and Race Committee which built on the work of this diversity committee by planning and leading even more conversations and educational programs around the issues of race. In the fall of 2019, the SCORE committee decided to add opportunities for pilgrims to act upon racial justice and equity issues by organizing four Be Bold groups, which are addressing issues related to immigration, homelessness, criminal justice, and racism and white privilege. A lot has already happened with these groups as a result, and I am incredibly grateful for, to Pilgrim Church for being bold and decisive on the side of justice for all of God's children. This morning, we want to bring you up to date on what's been going on with the Be Bold group that is focusing on anti-racism issues. After they, this summer, they planned a highly successful presentation organized um, by the Be Bold group on policing policies led by Andre Watkins, a police scholar from Houston, and the brother of Pilgrim's own Wilbert Watkins. Now the group is seeking out our next action on behalf of making Pilgrim an, a more anti-racist congregation. To that end, we are in the process of developing an anti-racism pledge that each church member can read, sign, and by doing so, commit themselves to take action to become more anti-racist. 
Watch more for more information about this in the coming weeks. So finally, I also wanted to take a few minutes to talk with you about a related upcoming activity being planned by the Ministry of Christian Outreach for next month. In light of last fall's divisive election and the upheaval after it, many of us are feeling that we are now living in a world that is more div divided than it has ever been. Some of you even had this issue become painfully close to home for you as you visited with family during the holidays. So the Ministry of Christian Outreach is working on an event in March for Pilgrim members to address this issue. We've identified a local social worker who has experience leading workshops on this subject on how to deal with the kind of this kind of polarization that the elections have caused amongst friends and family. And he's willing to do those workshops with us pilgrims. To get ready for it, the facilitator is asking for, to for us to convene a small group of pilgrims in sometime in February to help him plan this mar March workshop to most meet everybody's needs. So if you are interested in being part of the planning process for this workshop, please contact me through the church office. Thank you and watch for more details and a date for this mar March workshop to be announced very soon. Thank you and have a great morning. And now please join me in singing our closing hymn. Leaning on the everlasting arms What a blessedness What a peace of mind Leaning on the everlasting arms Leaning, leaning Safe and secure from all alarms What have I to fear? Leaning on the everlasting arms. I have blessed peace with my Lord so near. Leaning on the everlasting arms. Leaning, leaning, safe and secure. sisters and brothers receive this benediction may the spirit of god take your hand and lift you up so that you may be of service to all go now in peace to love and serve in the name of the father son and holy spirit amen <laughs>